Well, folks, welcome along once again to another edition of the Irish Rally Podcast. This evening, in association with Bluestone Motor Finance, working with established nationwide base of motor dealers specialising in providing finance for cars and vans across Ireland since 2014. Extensive product range available and suitable for buyers right across the credit spectrum with competitive rates and simple lending solutions for all circumstances. Check out bluestonemotorfinance.ie and a shout out as well to our associate sponsors this evening, pmautos.ie. We are, of course, looking back on the Wexford Volkswagen Stages Rally, which was a phenomenal success, I have to say. We have a stellar cast lined up for you this evening. Uh, very shortly, I'll be chatting to none other than Mr. Mikko Hervernan. After that, we'll be chatting with Danny Mullins and Hall Marr. Richard Moffat will then join us, followed by Kevin Eves, Daniel Barry and Larkin Moore. Uh, Tom Scallon is jumping on with us. Andrew Purcell, the man himself behind PM Autos, is uh, jumping on with us uh, alongside uh, Andy Hayes, winners of the event, of course. And Adrian Codd, the uh, chairman of Wexford Motor Club and deputy COC the other day, is going to join us to give us a rundown on our class winners, as we always do here on the Irish Rally Podcast. As I said, we're live on Facebook, on YouTube and on Twitter. If you want to get your comments in, you can do so underneath Facebook and YouTube in particular. It's easy to bring in to the interface. Now, as we said, we start off with a bang here this evening. And uh, we're going to introduce a man who has won 15 rounds of WRC, been on the podium 69 times from 163 events and 263 stage wins. None other than Mr. Miko Hervernan. Great to have you, Miko. How's things? Yeah, all good. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be nice to be back on the on interview. You're you're back you're back in the land of the living. You're back home since last night you were telling me off air. Yeah, yeah, back home yesterday and uh well actually I stayed one more night in Helsinki and really back home in Uaskula just uh, today after midday. So uh, all good. Yeah, was the was the head sore going home? No, no, oh. not too bad, not too bad. I actually managed to Avoid kind of the worst, uh, worst part in a way, or the craziest part in a way. I had just a couple of pints, but then I had a you know early start six o'clock, so I I thought okay, I'm gonna make it to the airport and make it to my flight. So not too bad, not too bad. You learned the hard way from the last time in West Cork, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely I took it a little bit more steadier now. Yeah, good stuff. Well, listen, the weekend itself, obviously, you know, we spoke at the ramp on on Friday night. There was a fantastic crowd there for. The ceremony to start, there was a good buzz about the place, and that five carried through right across the weekend. Uh, we saw it with the crowds on the stages, and just in general, there's a real, I suppose, feel good factor across the weekend. But from your point of view, I suppose, did you enjoy it? Um, a couple of cracking times on, on Sunday in particular, yeah, I did, I did really. I mean, uh, there's not so many occasions that you know, uh, nowadays anymore that I, I have time to go outside and do rallies. And uh, you know, see all the fans and, and spectators. But uh, you know, so it was really, really amazing. Really grateful to get the opportunity. First of all, there was lots of people who uh, who made it happen. And uh, you know, it was really nice to see such a well organized rally. You know, like you said, lots of people on Friday night on a ceremonial start. And uh, you know, everybody always makes us feel so welcome over there. So it's really nice always when there's an occasion to to come back and and do rallying. So. Everything worked perfectly. It was really nice to be there. Mm -hmm. There's a fantastic relationship between, I suppose, Finland rally fans, Irish rally fans, and I suppose Irish, you know, fans across the, the world in general. But in particular, um, one of the things I would notice uh, in addition to this was I went live for about six minutes on, on Sunday just to catch a bit of the action. And the amount of people from Finland who have liked the post is unbelievable. So, you know, it's uh, it's just amazing. And we all know how how people love their, their rallying over there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't even come over to, to Wexford and do a two-day event without the, without the boys at home keeping an eye on you. But uh, it's great to have that fan base, Mikko, isn't it? It is, yeah. It is fantastic. Like, to, to see how people, you know, get together in a way all around the world. And there was actually... Um, there was a couple of guys from Finland actually came to spectate only for that rally, which was, uh, you know, funny to see as well that they choose to. They were thinking of going to maybe spectate on Rally Spain or a little bit sunnier place or then coming to Ireland to see rally local, just as a kind of a local rally over there. And, and they had never been there before, but they really enjoyed it. And I'm sure they're definitely going to spread the word, word as well, like in Finland to uh, to encourage everybody else as well from here just to see a rally over there and uh they said the same thing that they were really you know all the people they met 
you know, on the road and pubs and bars and wherever, they're really kind of welcoming and, and friendly. So uh, it was really nice to see, and for them as well. You know, I'm sure it's not their last time to come over there and see a rally. And also, you have really great drivers. The modified class cars is something you don't see anywhere else really than there or, or in UK maybe. So uh, definitely worthwhile. There's a real big rally kind of a... Our rally is really big and really popular over there. So it's, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. I suppose you're no stranger to, to Ireland in the wet. When you think back to Rally Ireland, the conditions weren't exactly favourable either. So it wouldn't have came, I suppose, completely as a big surprise to you. And obviously you've seen all these kind of conditions down through the years regardless. But... You know, Sunday Sunday was pretty crazy. Uh, the stages were difficult, but yet you were putting in those times that we spoke about. So um, I know you had issues on the Saturday in particular, but did you grow into the whole thing a little bit more on the Sunday as well, despite the conditions, do you think? Yeah, for sure I did. And then I don't know if it did help a bit, like like the little test I did, that was on on wet, wet conditions. So uh, maybe that gave me a bit of a better feeling. But anyway, the problems I had on Friday, I, I caused it. I believe myself anyway, like uh, it was still a little bit damp in the morning and we had the soft tire in the front and medium in the back. And I was not confident at, at all. And I was started to lock the brakes too easily on the, on the rear of the car, on the back of the car. So, uh, you know, then just hesitating all the time and standing a bit bit too much on the, on the brakes. So I cooked them myself. So, so my mistake on Friday. But then when, when you know, the team and Ryan, and they finally find solution, you know, slowly started to build up and find more confidence, uh, confidence for, for driving and for the car as well. So it did help, but for sure, you know, it's, it's, it's also that, you know, I start to be rusty as well. You know, I don't compete so much anymore in rallying. So always the first run through the States, you know, not so confident with the notes either. So, uh, you know, for sure that plays a part as well, but um, it doesn't, Still, it doesn't take away the the speed of the locals, what they are doing. Even like uh, on on Sunday and the last three stages on Saturday, where I felt kind of comfortable, you know, I had a I was no match for them. So they are really in on their own league over there. Mm -hmm. There is a huge draw for the modified uh, men over here. You know what I mean? And it's it's just got so popular. It always has been popular, but the pace of it now is just crazy. And I suppose. From the last time you were here, which is obviously three years ago, have you have you noticed a bit of a change yourself from from the weekend, uh, be it with the volume of men and and the pace as well? Well, well, I was shy anyway, so I suppose either <laughs> I'm getting worse or they are getting hell of a lot better. So it's either way, but uh, <laughs> but it's it's good to see. Like it's really nice to see that the, you know that class is is doing so well. You know because those cars are really amazing. And, uh, you know, also the variety of the cars, it's not only Mark II's, but there's Toyota Starlights and, and Corollas as well, and Darien's, you know, all different kind of class and, uh, or cars, I mean, and, uh, you know, the pace is getting better and better. That's what always happens, you know, the, I'm sure boys over there, they know the rallies, but they get to, you know, they get to be more handy with the cars and they're developing them as well. So, you know, naturally it happens that the boys, uh, are getting better and the speed is getting higher so uh, it is difficult to follow but you know great and big respect for them as well that you know they are really really on a good level over there mm -hmm. and how about Jaro did he did he enjoy himself on and off the stages this time yeah he did he did yeah I mean he's always been uh, like last time as well really enjoys doing rallies outside of Finland and uh, you know and what he said as well like it's such a good Atmosphere with other drivers, you know, they're always helping and the co-drivers are helping Arno as well because, you know, all the little things are a little bit different than back home. So uh, everybody were really open and helping and just saying that, you know, well, whatever happens in the road sections, it doesn't matter. Like they just said, we go on the stages and that's where, that's where we make the difference. So, uh, you know, fantastic, fantastic feeling to, to be in a competition like that where everybody are helping uh, each other. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something that people remark about in Ireland in general, in between the stages, how helpful competitors are to one another. Uh, yes, everyone wants to beat each other once, once the helmets go on and, you know, once you leave the start line. But that camaraderie, like, um, I suppose it's probably unfair to ask you, is it unique to Ireland? But it's definitely very prominent, isn't it, in between the stages, the bit of crack you'd have with the other lads, like. It is, yeah, it is, it is, yeah. And, 
uh, you know, I would just love to do it more and more in a way. Like, uh, like yeah, no, it's it was you know again fantastic to to be be back there and uh, do the speed I was able to do with that car. But then you kind of always get a feeling that damn, I would like to go again in a couple of weeks and uh, you know get more used to it and really try to get on a pace and challenge everybody else because it's it's really a fair fight with everybody in a way like i like i just said so uh, such a good crack always just yeah. hopefully get a chance again to come back yeah that was uh the next question i was going to ask and the last question i was going to ask are you going to come back but i'll actually i'll actually add to this again if a, if a sponsor became available i suppose could would miko herbert commit to doing the irish tarmac championship and having a go at the modify <laughs> well championship might be maybe uh you know I, I mean you never say never but like at the moment like uh, work-wise you know it's this uh, i'm doing partly the um toyota Casa rating young driver program as well which keeps me fairly busy so mm -hmm. uh for the moment championship i don't think i would have time to do but you know two or three two or three rallies if i could fit in in my calendar that's that might be possible, but uh, you know, you never know. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, and lastly, just I mentioned this at the ramp the other night. I want to give a shout out to your son who is now competing as well at the age of sixteen. As I said at the ramp the other night, I still had stabilizers on my bike when I was sixteen, and there's that young lad of yours now competing in rallying, which I think is amazing. But uh, you know, you sat in with him, I think, for for the first event, and we'll just give the viewers and listeners uh, an insight into into how that went. <laughs> well. Well, we are, you know, we are still living in, uh, in in the same house, so we didn't have any bigger fight in in, in a rally car. But I uh, know it's it's really we just have a just having fun, and and uh, he he's just starting his his rally. He's just done basically two rallies, so really at the beginning. So uh, we take it one rally at a time. But we had, a, you know, I felt really it was such a nice to be with him in the car and see how he enjoys it as well, and uh, you know. All went well so far. Two rallies, and uh, and uh, uh, we've been. You know, he's been staying, staying on the road. So uh, it's been a good start. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, Hervon and Solberg, Rafa Pair, all these names now coming around once more. It's mad how how the years progress. Miko, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us here, and great to chat to you at the ramp on Friday. Well done, and uh, I'm coming over bringing such. I suppose you know. Uh, Graw for the event, big big numbers, uh, you know, turned up to see and all that. So uh, we appreciate that, and thanks very much again for coming on with us here. All right, no worries. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be there again. Thank you. Thanks, Miko. Here we go, Miko Hervin, and what a legend. Uh, Danny Wollens was backstage. I think he said they're disappearing on us momentarily, but we have Michal Mar, who looks a little bit tired. Michal, how's things? Good, good, Kevin, and you? Ah, not too bad at all. Uh, I tell you, right, if you were told beforehand that Danny Wollens and Michal Mar. Seeded one four one, we're going to come home forty seventh overall. You'd be saying, lads, hold on now, you're waking up here with your head in a bowl of cornflakes. You're still asleep. That was fair. it was fair going. You must have had a great crack. It's absolutely unbelievable what he did. Danny sat in a rally car at rally speed for the first time at two o'clock on Thursday in Cloheen with Tom Gahan Motorsport testing. Now it probably stood to him that it was spilling rain that day as well. But we got no dry tarmac. He never drove on a dry stage until half ten on Saturday morning. And to sit in for a rally car, you know, to finish a rally is amazing. To finish a two-day rally, I know the tour for sponsoring us, but like this was a thousand to one chance. The man, listen, he's a barn driver. Like he wouldn't do the job he has as a race, as a racehorse um, jockey, if he wasn't into speed, adrenaline. He loved the whole buzz. Um the weekend was so I really, really enjoyed. Saturday was fantastic. Um, Sunday, we got through it. We, we still set fastest times. We hit a few ditches and bales, but it was just unbelievable. But the guys, our sponsors, they, they said, Michal, what, what realistically, how do you think the weekend will go? Well, I said, there's 50 people on each page, I said. So I said, if we go into the second page Saturday evening, I'd be delighted. And if we could even scrape into the first page, and your man said to me, getting back on the plane, he said, God, my God, get up into the top 50 uh, first time rally. It's unbelievable. It's just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. 
I think the man himself might be backstage now. I, I see and I hear rumblings here. I think he's just trying to get set up. But we'll try throw one here anyway. Danny, are you with us? Yes, I'm on. I'm on now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We have you here loud and clear. Um, I was I was saying to, to someone Sorry, no, there I earlier. I just went through a tunnel there. I lost you. <laughs> come on, come on. I hope you paid the toll. Um, I know the last couple of days you have covered some grounds. So you went from Wexford at the weekend to Manchester yesterday, and I believe you're over in the USA now. And I was saying two thirds of the world is covered by water, and the rest is covered by Danny Mullins. <laughs> 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 just about yeah, I'm, I'm lucky enough i'm enjoying the journey i'm i've uh, yeah it's been a great week for me and yeah the, the fun is not over yet good man um i was just singing your praises here to to me hall uh 47 man like that's beyond belief you must have been absolutely delighted that line is breaking up there now i'm just dropping in and out now yeah, yeah, we wait. That isn't great here. We'll see. We'll see. Can we? We'll see. Can we get your settled? I don't know if you can still hear us, but I was just saying, forty-seven overall wasn't too shabby. Like, no, I think he's he gone. Must be, he mustn't be able to hear you because he's never sharp. No. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> he is yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole, all of it is anyway. Um, I suppose. An assumption I would make is that he probably listened to you and listened to the advice over the couple of days. Because uh, if he didn't, he'd have the the whip. The whip would be cracked. Pardon the pun. I know we're talking about with jockey, but you know yourself. Yeah. The, the amazing thing about it was, um, I've rallied for years and years done loads of rallies, but I always one was quickest and six was ninety. So right six was always slow to me, and my mind. But for some reason, Andy Hayes told him it's better the other way. That uh, one is quickest. Are, uh, and six is the you know the opposite way to what so when i was reading right four to right five i said tighten it because that's even though on the notes it was opening and mm -hmm. and danny said to me at the end of the stage you know he said some of them notes are wrong he said you're calling a four to a five and you're saying they're tightening and it should be open and i said oh, God, danny no that's my fault that's just my mind for 10 years of this a four to a five is tightening in my mind but i said I'm reading the notes wrong because I'm reading my mind is reading them quicker than what I'm reading off the paper. But very, very intelligent, very clever. The notes just sank in and it, it, it's really gelled, but great crack, good crack now. Really gelled and yeah, good crack. Yeah, are you hearing that part now, Danny? I'd say I'd say you're hearing that because there's a bit of praise coming your direction. I, I got a little bit of intelligence. Intelligence there, and I think I'll have to record that and save that clip. <laughs> Look, I know, I know the bandwidth isn't hectic there, so I won't put you under too much pressure. I know you're in transit, uh, but uh, if, if you can hear us, I suppose you know you were competing the weekend for the tomorrow for Tomas, uh, I suppose cause, and that link is now underneath this stream as well for anyone that wants to donate. And I know there's a right few pound after coming in, but I suppose the message would be obviously not to be speaking on your behalf. He's gone this. But what I was going to say was anyone would have feel Bob to, to put it underneath. But the response to me, Hall, has been fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. And everywhere, everywhere. Um, to Wexford Motor Club, such an event. The atmosphere, apart from the crowds on the Friday, but the atmosphere, I, I, I've never seen that at a rally before. Maybe Donegal sometimes in the last few years. But the, the people were so welcome. They really welcomed you. The club were fantastic. The marshals on the stages, the amount of marshals, I mean, there was 10 and 12 marshals in every stage on Saturday. I didn't see anybody on Sunday. I just couldn't see. As bad as the weather was, our demister packed up. Uh, I couldn't see a thing. I was driving in pure fog, and we still managed to get through it. But the marshals that stood out in the rain, and we stopped at most of them on the, on the way back and thanked them, and they were just so happy. And, you know, I said, go off and get a point. But they were in such good form. They were delighted we were there, and we were absolutely thrilled to be there. I think Danny, it was an eye opener to Danny. We weren't in the crowd of lunatics going off in bad mark in bad escorts. I, I was showing them all the different industries. There's guys selling pace notes, there's guys selling clocks, there's guys setting up ramps. It's an industry within an industry that keeps a lot of people going. And, and Danny was just amazed. And he said to me, right, we have hard we started on Thursday in, in testing, and we never stopped till half six Sunday night. And there were four hard like I, the last time I did Wexford was 90 or 91 in a Nissan 240 RS with Dan Daly. 
from the Falls Road. Wexford then was kind of a day and a half. It was a kind of a, and a, it was an end of season. It was just a crack. But this was too, this was as good as and as hard as any international rally I've ever done. So absolutely fantastic to the Motor Club, COC and the chair, everybody in Wexford. Absolutely brilliant weekend. Mm-hmm. So you definitely have the grow back because I know your comeback was was a couple of a couple of months ago. We were talking about it on on Friday. It probably didn't go as well as you wanted it to go, but the grow is back now. So are we going to see more of you over the next few uh, weeks, months, and years? Uh, absolutely. I always wanted to come back. My my career finished prematurely. I just lost interest in after the poor accident on the tenth of March, and I always wanted to come back. So my plan was a few a few years ago, and then I had a bit of medical issue, and then we COVID. So I said, I'd come back this year, do the stone throwers and try and win it. I had two drivers lined up that would have been in the top 10. And unfortunately, both of them pulled out. And I got a phone call on the Tuesday or the Wednesday from John Lynch. I didn't know him from Adam. Looked stuck for a navigator. His navigator's wife had COVID. So I sat in and that definitely didn't finish well. We, we, I must say we were lucky to get out of that. It, it was down to the strength of the modern day cards, the helmet, the hands, um, we hit that pole at some lick now and um, if that was 10 mm-hmm. i knew going to bed i was afraid going to bed sunday night because i knew monday morning i was going to be sore but i was perfect which is the strength of the modern cards um yeah i have my license now um and as you know craig is after buying our old sierra Cosworth that won the circuit of ireland 30 years ago the year danny was born so there's plans to do something in that when and where we don't know yet so uh yeah, yeah. Have a license with a travel. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, very good, John Lynch, a shout out, actually. If I had a, a hurl of ball and a hurl this minute, I'd probably be able to land the ball in, inside in Pedigree Corner, where where the premises okay. of there. So, yeah, yeah, he's, he's that he's that close. So uh, we'll, give him, we'll give him a shout out. Michal, I'll catch up with you again. I know we've, we've other plans that we need to delve into over the next couple of months that I haven't actually spoke to you about for some time. But we will get those done before the end of the year. There's uh, there's something big in the pipeline. Thanks a million for, for coming on again, Michal. And well done to yourself and Danny. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for all you do for Motorsport Promoted here in your podcast. All the best. Delighted to do so. Thanks a million, Michal. And again, just a shout-out for the tomorrow for Tomas Trust. Uh, the link tree is uh, underneath the post here on the stream, on YouTube, and on Facebook. It won't be underneath the Twitter one, but it's also on Danny Mullins' uh, social media pages there, the, the link tree to donate. So... If I was spare a few, Bob, uh, by all means, uh, throw it that way for a great cause. Uh, next up, we're going to speak to Richard Moffat. How are you keeping, sir? How are you having hard things? Ah, sir, not too bad. Uh, an eventful weekend for you. You were really setting in great pace, I suppose, on, on Saturday. And in the conditions, I suppose, as Larry Gogan used to say on the radio, they just didn't suit you, I suppose, on Sunday. Yeah, you could definitely say that. It was... Um... I think it was really a sort of a game of two halves. It was like two completely different rallies, obviously, the two days. Um, and Saturday went really well for us in the dry and um, everything felt felt very comfortable. Um, and then we, we knew, like, we knew the rain was coming uh, Sunday. We just didn't know, I suppose, when or, or how much. Um, but it obviously came down, um, you know, well, probably as bad a condition as, as, as I've ever seen, um, especially when we got to the, the second loop. Um, and look, it was it was difficult for everyone. I I'm not a fan of the wet really at all. I wouldn't wouldn't consider it much fun, but it's obviously a, a part of the sport when we're when we're rallying in Ireland, especially. Um, so yeah, we probably look at we're we're very happy with the with the weekend overall. Um, we probably learned a few things on Sunday, I think, in terms of wet setup and, and tires, and we picked up a bit of pace in in the last loop, and, and hopefully we can sort of take that on. Um, you know because rains uh probably more than likely you're gonna you're gonna face it here and there um but yeah the, the conditions especially in that middle loop when it was raining heavy and, and the water was uh, it was light um were, were just crazy um kevin i think probably has a good bit of experience in the wet and he, he tell himself that he that he likes it um and it was always going to be going to be hard to hold but on that middle loop in particular um he sort of um really let the thing go and, and we're, we're happy to to settle for for a fifth at that, at that point Mm-hmm. Uh, this clip is obviously up on the Moffat Motorsport Facebook page, but we took the liberty of um, of grabbing it here as well, and we we'll, we'll give it a blast just to show people how tricky conditions were. Oh my God, sixty. 
three left, Lee at water inside, and pass right for 100 over absolute crest. Okay, go. Start up. Fast right for 100 over crest. 40, fast left. 60. Yeah. Jenny Mac, like you could even hear it in your voice there beforehand. It's like as if you knew something was about to happen, like and maybe lucky to get away with it. That, that was was that the first or second spin you had on that one? You had a couple on, on one. Yeah, uh, that that was the first. Yeah, we were we were down through the tape uh, not too too long after that. Um, I suppose that the problem is on on a stage like that we were probably didn't have. Well, in fact, definitely didn't have have the right tires on. We had a sort of a. Um, like a cut soft, uh, what would be a soft slick, Sh should be able to cope in most wet conditions. But when it gets to that level of, of standing water, um, you need something that's going to, you know, move, kind of uh, a tire that's going to going to move the water away. Um, and the tire also needs to warm up to work. Uh, the problem we were having there was that it was so treacherous that we weren't getting any heat into the tires. And anytime we were standing water, we were rather than moving it away, we were really just uh, on, on top of it. Um, and obviously, that's never going to work. So. Yeah, it was uh, like like you say, you could hear like I had the feeling in the car before that that like you know you're just feathering throttle. Obviously, it's rear rear wheel drive, um, you know, three hundred and fifty horsepower, and the start is probably a little bit shorter as well, which maybe maybe doesn't necessarily suit the wet. Um, but yeah, you're, at, at that point, you're sort of just trying to hang on and hold the thing on the road. So we we had that uh, moment, you know, really sort of. A passenger at the point that the, the car takes off there and um, looking to get away with it and then like i said we had another overshoot later on the stage and at that point we were really just trying to survive really and, and uh get back to get back to service and like i said we put a, a, a more wet setup uh tire wise on then for for the last loop and, and felt a lot more comfortable so hopefully that's mm. sort of a, lear a learning we can take uh, going forward yeah in general your form has been very good over the last number of months richard is there anything in particular that you feel has has clicked for you in that period not not really being perfectly honest um i've done a bit more rallying this year i haven't done an awful lot over the last number of years really i was actually looking i think i've done seven rallies in the last since core 20 last year so in the last 12 months i've done seven rallies um and in the previous five or six years i've probably only done the same number of rallies and uh, just with one thing or another i wasn't really doing that much so that's definitely an element of it um you know getting a bit more seat time uh, i always felt there was you know I could be close enough to the pace but not on any sort of consistent basis and a bit of luck and a few mistakes from me and whatever we just never really seemed to put a result together but um from monaghan this year and um, we had a, a couple of issues but ha showed a good pace at least and um, killarney we showed a good pace on day one but i made a mistake on on Mall's gap on day two um and then in donegal i mean donegal is another level um in terms of pace and i think Donegal's got to the point now where it's sort of the pinnacle of every season. Stages are pretty, like even I have done the rally five or six times, so it's not like recce and make your pace notes and and you know start from scratch. It's have done them before and you remember them. It's more like racing than rallying. But our pace is pretty good in Donegal, just not at the at the very very sharp end of it. But we finished sixth. And um, but again, that was another three days under the belt. Um, which you know we're probably learning the car and starting to make a few more tweaks. I think when you can be in the car. Um, a bit more consistently then you can you know make a change and, and know how it felt the last time whereas if you're a year out of the car you're starting from scratch every time so then we went to galway um, and just had made a couple more suspension tweaks in the car and it just felt really good from, from the start um, and we were able to kind of maintain that pace all day i had a good battle with gary uh, and got the better of him by by a handful of seconds um yeah and then just just carried it into wexford um i think probably the one difference is um like we, we would generally be pretty good on a first loop um where we've made notes and it's it's very much sort of blind apart from the notes but you've never you know rallied on the loop before and then where other guys would would kick on um you know second and third loop we didn't seem to make the improvements that we had and i think that's probably becomes commitment at that point um and yeah at the weekend for example like our we were taking good chunks out of our own time um on, on the second loop and um that was kind of keeping us right at the at the thick end but so there's definitely there's not one sort of like of moment that that's happened probably just a bit more time in the car and um, car working really well a uh, combination of notes and um, setup and, and, and tires um and, and just all working well and 
I can see that with lots of drivers, you get on, on roads and things go well, and then you know you can't you can't sort of buy your results you know, for a while, so we take it while it's going. Mm-hmm. So overall, happy with a top five and finishing ahead of Mister Mister Hervin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like it was obviously cool to have to have Miko there. Um, he had his issues on Saturday morning, but um, you know, I heard him saying there himself, like even on Saturday afternoon, um, and myself and Declan and Kevin and Gary were like it was stages fourteen kilometers. We're coming out with maybe um, two seconds between all of us, um, and you know, Miko was was end up. Like maybe a second a kilometer to, to find and and you know i'm not sure where where i find it today anyway but look he's obviously world class and i know if he could if you get a bit more time under his belt in that car and um, on irish tarmac he, he'd be close but yeah it was cool we, we said it to him at the end you know it was cool to have him there and, and it's a sort of a, a different experience uh, for us to be um racing against some of his caliber albeit out of his comfort zone i suppose mm-hmm. lastly then richard what's next on the agenda uh, I have no plans at the, at the moment. Um, obviously, there's not that many r- uh, rallies left this year. Um, poss- possibly get one more in. Um, I would have said before, Rexford, that'll be my last uh, rally of the year. But you do kind of get the bitten by the bug a little bit when you're on a roll. Um, and everyone's, you know, people are saying, oh, you, you have to keep at it now type of thing. Um, I don't know is the honest answer. We'll, we'll take a look at it um, and, and see. Maybe I'll do nothing or maybe I'll, maybe I'll do one more event. Um, Donegal and Killarney Starks. Um, the car is actually going to bottom last. I see the list uh, came out there this evening, but um, it's going back to its original owner. Dad's taking the, my car to bottom last. Oh, so, deadly. Um, nice one. Yeah. So that's in a few weeks. So I'll go down there for a look, but uh, I'll not be behind the wheel myself. Good man. My see you on the ditches. Thanks, William, for jumping on with us, Richard. Appreciate so it. Right. No problem. Thanks for having me, Cheers. That's Richard Moffat. Uh, plenty of comments coming in. We'll get to those very quickly because we are a little bit off our running order, about five minutes behind it. Uh, what a gentleman, Miko, is generous with his time. Another great ambassador for our sport. Hopefully he can convince Yari Matty to join him in the future on their stages. That's from Sean Keown. Uh, great McCarthy says he had good practice in the wet and west car 2019, obviously referring to the west and Wexford that Miko and everyone else had to endure uh, at the weekend. Uh, Andrew Knox, uh, it was great to have you back on the Irish stage. Any more fans in doing more? A must. Donegal International Rally, again, in relation to uh, Mick Owen. Two more, uh, Gavin Dempsey says, hero. And Neil Dempsey says, met Mick Owen in Germany a few years ago. Absolute gentleman and incredible driver. Love seeing him compete in Ireland. Dennis Rin says, well done, Kevin. Great guest speaker. Thanks a million, Dennis. Uh, write in your comments, lads. Keep coming. Uh, just underneath the Facebook and YouTube posts. Kevin Eves, how's things with you, boss? <laughs> Super. Hey, what's happening? Would you be one of those, I don't know, it's probably weird to describe it as uh, as psychotic, but when you're in a car like yours and it starts raining, you seem to enjoy those conditions and revel in them. What is the story? I I don't know. I, I'd say I actually don't know. I suppose I always seem to. I would can kind of always run even chatting Ray in when I put him in my car. Um, I would always run my car even softer and can always like it moving about and stuff. So I don't know. Then when I get into the wet, I can I just. I seem it seems to work out. It kind of good uh, set up and seem to get away okay. <laughs> yeah, you had two, if not three, top three times. I think on Sunday. I well, when you, I suppose when you, uh, I was kind of confident what I could do in the wet, and I suppose Richard, given him what he done on Saturday, like, and all the racing we've done, I suppose it's the first time Richard's probably put it together, and like, you know we started Sunday morning, Richard thirty four five seconds on us. We were maybe a wee bit underconfident and breaking and stuff on Saturday, but like towards the end of the day, we were we were pushing on all right. We were maybe we could see where he was, but he was on a he was on a big pace. Like he had even you know Declan was sitting fifteen seconds behind him. Me and Gary was a couple of seconds off each other. Um, so we just kind of knew, I suppose, we had to go ding dust in the rain and kind of hoped he was going to be maybe a wee bit shaky. It was going to be harder for him mentally, but I suppose to try and manage the pace in that kind of condition. So we just went down it, I suppose. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a good crack. Um, I suppose you know Wexford were we're lucky that they only lost stage seventeen in the end because you know it was it was torrential, like wasn't it? In fairness, aye, but I suppose that's how it's rallying too. I suppose that's what it's it's kind of all about. Too. There's a like he, he, even David, I'd say what or Richard, sorry, what didn't even probably help him. I suppose his, his puncture, he was even carrying maybe a, a wrong tire or a spare. You know, he had a medium on. For a stage or two in the rain, and I suppose then we chipped eight and nine seconds of stage then off him. So 
I suppose actually there's more to it. You have to be prepared for it, I suppose, and that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. And as we spoke about on Friday, that was your first time in Wexford. After the weekend, will you be back? Oh, definitely. I actually didn't really. I suppose Wexford, any of the championships and stuff, I, the last couple of years, I suppose, I locked myself into some of them championships and there was so much going on. You never really step outside them. And um, I didn't actually really even think Wexford was as many kilometres and stuff as it was. <laughs> It's savage value. I can always thought it was like a day and a half kind of rally, a couple of stages mm. on the Saturday and then a full day Sunday. But I hey, class stages, and I suppose everybody's welcome. They're kind of glad you're down there. And I suppose it's even it just how definitely we will be back. It, is a, it was a savage weekend. Mm -hmm. And look, we know how busy you've been this year, but uh, same question as I posed to Mr. Moffat there before. Uh, what's next? Obviously, the harvest will be something you'll be looking at for sure. I would probably go to the Harvest and Clarney is probably the game plan, um, I would think. Um, that's what we're going to try and fit in anyway. Hey, after, after that weekend, we probably haven't been out since Donegal and even Wexford. Even truthfully, what would have took me to Wexford was even, uh, I suppose, Miko was in Ryan's camp or I suppose our camp for the weekend. So it was uh, hard not to go down the road. Yeah, so. and he brought serious hype to the whole thing, didn't he, in fairness? And it gave you probably... As I, as I would have said to a few lads on Friday, uh, even though you set your own standards, I suppose, and put your own goals in place, there's still that bit of a grow there that you want to kind of get ahead of them, isn't there? Ah, yeah, you like to get racing them, but hey, same way, I wouldn't like to, like you seen on Sunday there, like we were putting a push on to catch Richard, and I think on one of them stages that we were we were baiting on what we thought was good, Miko only slipped into the oak for a day. Like I think he took a second or two out of us, you know. On it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't like him to do too much now. He could make a bit of a show of us, but um, <laughs> but no, nah, he's good out crack. Hey? It's just acting he was sound now. Hey? Even made a bit of baller, and he kind of would have give us a bit of a, a shove down the road to get going again and stuff. And those good out crack out of them for the weekend. So definitely cool. Yeah, uh, that's the one thing that strikes me as was is how down to he is. Like you know what I mean. And for someone who's gone and and know what he's done for for so long over twelve year period in WRC. It's just like one of the boys, he's not different to yourself or, or Richard or, or Kieran or any of the boys in, in that class, like, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, no, definitely, hey, that is definitely what's cool about it, hey. He seems to have an interest in that stuff, I suppose, his own historic car and stuff, and he thinks that, I suppose, the big 2.5 stuff seems to be a, a big interest to him, he seems to love it, so it's cool to see. Yeah, definitely. Kevin, thanks so many for jumping on for a few minutes. Really yeah. appreciate it. All the best, good to catch up. Kevin Eves. Uh, next up, we're going to bring in uh, Larkin Moore and Daniel Barry, who are backstage with us. How are you doing, gents? What's the story? How are you doing? How's it going? Happy, happy with the top three finish, I bet, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Saturday stage is probably, you know, uh, yeah, took a while to get going and stuff like that, you know, and uh, get the confidence back after a bit of an accident we had, so. Uh, yeah, it was a bit a bit slow starting and uh, just didn't come quick enough for me. But um, then I actually really, really enjoyed the Sunday stages, you know. Um, I always kind of liked the wet and kind of and challenged and uh, I enjoy it. So, yeah, it was good to get the finish, you know. Yeah, and like when you have something like that happening to you and happened so recently, coupled in with the fact that not a whole lot of events have been done over the last couple of years, um, you know, you would have taken that beforehand, like. Yeah, absolutely. I said it to Larkin there. If someone had said, uh, you know, at the start of uh, Saturday morning, you're going to be toured overall at the end of the rally, I'd be like, yeah, I'll take that all day long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what was it like, I suppose, Larkin, to, to call notes? And we've had chats with drivers here in the earlier part, and it's uh, something that I didn't really put to, to Michal, um earlier in the programme. But, uh, you know, it's obviously every bit as difficult, probably, for, for the co-driver to keep concentration with all that going on in front of you as well, because... You know, your visibility isn't what it is if it's dry. Yeah, um, I mean, the middle loop on, on Sunday was absolutely treacherous, but uh, you kind of feel your way on the stage where you are, gauging by, you know, if the momentum of the car is moving left or right. Those times there where it's just total lack of playing and you couldn't see out the window at all, but um, you'd only get a quick glance anyways. But you're basically going off the field at some times, especially in the fast stuff um, of where you're at. Daniel drove well and he was on um, on Sunday for sure and yeah, I enjoyed it now. Mm. Couple of fastest times in there as well, uh, in those conditions. So again, that's that's obviously very pleasing, Daniel, yeah. Yeah, um I heard a couple of guys saying, you know, that the stage would be cancelled and stuff and 
maybe just because I, you know, the car I'm in as a four wheel drive car, but it was actually really enjoyable. Like I, I enjoyed a challenge or something like that because, you know, it takes a bit of thinking involved and you can't just go flat out because if you go flat out, you're going to go off the road. So it's one. Oh, Good. he's gone. He's back. He, you went off the road yourself there for a second. <laughs> you're back. You're back with us now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, the old thing like keeps keeps dropping here, but um, yeah. So it's just it's a matter of like picking your way through it, and I, I kind of enjoy that, you know, because it's you're using your brain and stuff. It's not just flat out. So um, yeah, I kind of when the rally was over, I kind of wanted to do another couple of days. I wanted to keep going on to Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I suppose Larkin, um, I was just going back through Daniel's record before Friday and doing some homework and stuff, right? And the co-drivers that he's had, and now you're joining that league as well. But it's completely, it's completely against what, what Daniel seems to go for, right? Because there was a Rory Kennedy, a Gordy Noble, and a heap of lads like that of a particular vintage. And then a 23 or 4 year old jumps in here all of a slap. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting little thing, I thought. I know, it's random enough on, um I was actually working for Brendan Gumsky at the time, and uh, Daniel was going out to do spa last year and uh andy hayes was sitting with him and, and andy was caught with work and somebody had to do the recce so i flew out with daniel and did the recce for spa with him and we did a bit of testing on the shakedown as well um and then andy sat in and did that rally but uh yeah so that's how that came about and um we did a run then in tyrone this year as well and like that started started off and then we got into it so yeah it just seemed to click mm -hmm. Uh, there's a comment in here now. This person may or may not be on the program a little bit later on, but they're particularly proud of their tactics for Wexford, putting Daniel into a hedge in France to knock his confidence for, confidence for the event. <laughs> <laughs> Figure that one out. Oh, it's yeah, easy yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, uh, just regarding, regarding Larkin there, like, uh, you know, you said he's young and stuff like that, and I've sat with lots of guys and really some, some great guys over the years, but uh, he's um, he's a really good navigator, and he's like, you, when you, when he's in a rally and he's doing it with you, you know, you don't think he's 23 or 24, he's, he's uh, you know, his boys are beyond his years, and he's a, he's a, a bright future in rallying, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. And you've covered a bit of ground over the last couple of years, uh, Larkin, that we were mentioning as well the other day. Um, yeah, you've seen, you've seen, You've seen a good bit of the world, haven't you? Yeah, it's um, bits and pieces in, in in Belgium and America and things like that. But, you know, no matter where you are, the job is the same. And I think the big thing is you have to enjoy it too. I mean, yeah, of course, rallying gets serious, but you have to be able to have a laugh in between and all because at the end of the day, um, if you don't enjoy it, then what's the point, you know? So, yeah, and like we do, in fairness, myself and Daniel do have a good laugh and recce and that too. Like, so, yeah, definitely, um, yeah, it's a bit of crack. But at the so, same time, then when you know when the helmet's on and that, especially the morning of the rally, we're kind of a bit more serious about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta get the balance right. That's what that's what it's all about mm -hmm. ultimately. Fair Definitely. Um, yeah. So what's what's happening next then, lads? Before we before we let you go, for what? Uh, I have I had had some plans to do a spa again this year. Um, um, one of the organisers, um, I know them, so they they kind of asked me back and see see where they come back. So. Um, we're going to try to put it together a bit of a deal and see what we can do with that because um, I finished sixth there last year with uh, Andy against some uh, some of the top drivers in Europe that were there, the likes of um, uh, Leferve and uh, Johan Russell and, and stuff like that. So it's some great drivers and uh, yeah, we finished sixth last year. So if we could maybe give it another shot and see if we get up the ladder a bit further, we'll be, yeah, I'd, be, I'd like to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Larkin? Um, this weekend, uh... Paul Holm oh, isn't able to sit with Jordan, so um, yeah, Jordan is, is leading the championship, but I think with drop scores, it's, it's kind of paddies, but there's a good battle to be had um, on Saturday, so yeah, really looking forward to sitting with Jordan Holm there in the bushwhacker, um, and maybe take the Civic out for a spin as well before the end of the year <laughs> in the driving seat if we, if we get a chance. That's yeah. the job. Lads, thanks William for jumping on, we'll have a chat again another time, alright? Thanks Thank Kevin. Have a good Thank one. Thank you. Larkin Moore and uh, Daniel Barry. Adrian Codd is backstage. He's coming on about 10 minutes' time. We give you a sneak preview there by mistake to pull the trigger on the wrong guest. Tom Scallon, how are you keeping? Good, and yourself, Kevin? Ah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, no sight nor light of, uh, of Mr. Stafford. I know deep down this is not James Stafford's thing anyway. I just know <laughs> yeah, I'd say it. you're right. <laughs> I'd say it is the last thing that that man wants to be doing is a podcast or something like this. He just gets on with his business. And by yes. God, did you get on with your business on Saturday? 
that was some day rallying. And look, the conditions, as soon as it started raining, you were going to be under pressure, Tom. But yeah. by God, it was so impressive on Saturday in particular. No, Saturday was a super day. Uh, we knew the rain was coming for Sunday. So we knew we had to do the work Saturday. So, uh, yeah, we gave it a good go Saturday. Really enjoyable. It was really good Saturday, yeah. Yeah, 53. Sunday. <laughs> yeah, 53 seconds, like, over, over days rallying uh, against four-wheel drive machinery. Like, it's very hard to find words to even... To, yeah, no, to come here. You know what I mean? It, it was super. Like, James drove really, really well. Like, we had very few moments as such as was on the last stage there on Saturday. We hit the chicane. Um, other than that, really, we didn't have any moments, you know, so that was very enjoyable, very enjoyable. Yeah, lucky enough, I suppose, that that was that was straw. Um, <laughs> we could yeah. talk about a different story, couldn't we? Absolutely, yeah. I was just looking at the in car footage there tonight, and um, yeah, very lucky, yeah. Lucky yeah. was straw. You were going only cutting my jaw there for a while, were you? <laughs> just a bit, <laughs> yeah, it was straw everywhere. But come here, we were lucky enough there, we got away with it, I suppose, yeah, but um. Yeah, no, Saturday was very impressive. Um, James was driving like his car control now was really, really good, you know. Mm-hmm. In fairness, then, we had a few issues with the back of the car, I suppose, going into that. And Sunday morning, in fairness to the service crew, like, without those guys, like, we just wouldn't have been out on Sunday. The rally could have been over. Like, what they had on Sunday morning was, like, unbelievable. Got that car up and running again for us to go Sunday. Like, you couldn't buy it, as they say, it was fantastic. Yeah. Now, I suppose, not, not to disregard Sunday, it's just Saturday was yeah. so spectacular, but you still put in decent enough times considering on the Sunday, which a lot of people are not really talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, it was, yeah, we did. We were doing okay. We did struggle. There's no doubt about it. Which, like, if you can see any of the clips of the videos out there, there's the car just couldn't get grip. It was just mm. one side to the other. I suppose the middle loop really was a disaster for us, I suppose, on the last stage of the middle loop. Um, we were very unlucky um, after the course cars went through, torrential rain came. I suppose we were only about a minute into it when it happened. Came out of nowhere and genuinely couldn't see out the window. It was like, James anyway, I can't see. I said, that's good, I can't either. So you were, you know, it wasn't enjoyable. That stage wasn't enjoyable. But come here, that's rallying. It's like the guys were saying, that happens in Ireland. What can you do? Mm-hmm. And in fairness, like the course cars had gone through, they didn't get that rain that we got caught in. So... And I suppose if you go back, probably 10 cars behind, the rain eased off. So, you know, other than that, we put in good times for the rest of the day. I thought, anyhow, it was, it was good, you know? Yeah, not too shabby indeed. Now, look, yeah. um, you know, I'm not going to sound condescending or anything because you really would have loved to have won it. You oh, know, but at the same time, when when you have conditions like that, even though you have to settle for second, it is not the end of the world. You could be talking about a different story when that bail was hitting and it's not a straw bail. You don't oh, go into yeah. Sunday at all. You know, you got no. a day's rally now and you still came second. Again, I know it's no consolation, but it's I better know. than what could have went like. You're dead right. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's a two-wheel drive machine. As I said to James back, when we got back to uh, Hertz there that evening, I said to him, we're sandwiched between two Scott R5s. Like, it's not a bad place to be, is it, in a two-wheel drive car? Do you know and when you look back along the modified section there, there's some seriously quick guys there. And James was still putting it up to those guys in the wet, in the dry. So, do you know, yeah, yeah, you'd have to be a happy man. Do you know, you'd have to be. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Are you sitting in with Tomas again later on this year? or what's I am, yeah, there? yeah. We're, I think we're going down as far as Banner. Um, I think that's the next plan for us. So, yeah, I've had a good year in that car as well. So, I've had hmm, quite an event for a good year this year, yeah. Probably done more yeah. rallying this year than I've done in three years, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, you know. The drug, the drug is back. He was 12th overall, I think. He, he did. He had a very, very good run. Yeah, yeah. Um, drove extremely. I think he was third or fourth. He had a good, one of the fastest times, or, or one of the top five or six fastest times on one of the stages in the way. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, he had a good run as well, which was great to see the car finish. And even though you're not in it, you're still looking, you know what I mean? You're, yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you're sitting in two cars. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Nice to have the, the luxury of, of being able to say into the tube, I suppose, and being being regarded for, for that job. But listen, Tom, thanks for jumping on. Appreciate just, it. Just nice before I go, I would like to thank on, all yeah. the marshals. I just would like to thank all the marshals there for the weekend. What they done was brilliant on Saturday and Sunday. And those guys on Sunday that stood out in that rain. Like without you guys, like we just don't have rallying. So fair play to them. And like for myself and James, really did appreciate it. And thanks very much for doing it, lads. And for the organizers as well. But the organisers knew what they were putting themselves in for, but the marshals, they didn't know the rain was coming. So those guys, thanks a million. 
Really appreciate it. Good man, Tom. Summed up well. Thanks a million. We'll chat to you soon. All right. Fair play. Tom Scallon. What a gent. Uh, now we're going to bring in Andrew Purcell and Andy Hayes, our winners on the weekend. Lads, great to have you on. Andrew, I suppose I should thank you first. PM Autos are involved uh, as an associate sponsor of uh, the programme here. Bluestone Motor Finance are the main sponsors of the programme. But uh, thanks thanks for that. And just to put any quibs or queries or qualms, Andrew Purcell did not buy his way onto this podcast this evening, folks. <laughs> just putting out that disclaimer. <laughs> no, think, definitely, lads? Kevin. Good, yeah. You would, um, you definitely caught me for this one last Wednesday or Thursday. So, um, <laughs> typical Andy. He was ringing anybody. There was anyone that would pay for something somewhere along the way. So. <laughs> Once he didn't have to pay for it, somebody was getting caught. Simple as that. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's that's the joys of it. That's the joys of it. Uh, I say you're paying for heavy celebrations the last couple of days, eh? No, not too bad. No. <laughs> Two days later, now we're not so bad. I don't know about Andy. Now he was at it again last night, but um, I was a bit more sensible. I was home and all early enough yesterday. I'm I mean, just Andy. looking at the big stick head on you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> at least we can handle it down here, make sure it's not like you sleep ruined, boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, lads, um, so up the weekend for us because although, you know, James had the 56 second lead, he still had to turn that around and you won by, was it, what was in the end? Was it 20? It was, it was a 124 turnaround, I calculate, roughly. 123 or 124 of a turnaround, which was a lot of work, four-wheel drive or no four-wheel drive, rain or no rain, and took a bit of commitment and a bit of balls. So um, that must have been pleasing, obviously, Andrew, yeah? Yeah, look, it was um, Saturday, I suppose. We were a bit demoralised, if the truth be known. Um, we went there with the intention of giving it a proper go. Um, would have said we upped our pace from having been in Galway, where we were competitive, fit to race the lads that were there, Dart, whatever else, and kind of had it in the back of our heads that we wanted to get to Wexford so we weren't on full complete tilt in Galway and then landed to Wexford ready to go and James just came out of the traps and we were just like right okay and in fairness to Andy he was like we're grand we're grand doing the tip of the accountant had all these figures worked out in his head that this was going to be grand and that was going to be grand and I think a lot of people know me that's not really my style it's normally go as hard as we can for as long as it lasts and to try and do that over 18 stages was never going to really work so um we kept pushing on all day saturday but just had absolutely no answer to him and even on change bits in the car and just got close to him two three seconds here or there and um but this other man was still assured the final find the rain is coming and we we're standing in park fermi on sunday morning and i was just going would this rain ever come on <laughs> it, it looked like it wasn't even going to come in time and we, we were driving out the road down card and you're looking at apps and you're looking at weather radars and you're going this is not going to come before 11 o'clock and then it, no it's coming at 10 o'clock and no and it eventually came so no we were we were happy to see the rain come for a change hadn't mm -hmm. done a, a wet rally in over 15 years but we were still we were going to give it a go and see what would happen like and you placing your fate in irish weather um that was that was a bit of a gamble <laughs> even though i know there was a strong chance of rain and we got it in the end but yeah <laughs> Yeah, usually you're hoping for the dry day, but this time we were hoping for the wet day, obviously. Um, yeah, no, like Andrew said, we kind of we were looking at it before the weekend started even and kind of said, right, a dry day and a wet day. Um, it'd be hard to beat James on the dry day, but hopefully we'll be a better shot on the wet day. Um, like you are saying yourself earlier on there, Kevin, uh, like James was going seriously hard on Sunday as well. It wasn't as if he, he, he watched because he was going slow or anything like that, but um, obviously you know, the four-wheel drive had, had a good advantage, so we were waiting for that to, to, to come. Mm -hmm. And Andrew, look, as we were saying the other day, uh, your appearances behind the wheel of a rally car have been few and far between over, uh, I suppose, the, la the last couple of years for, for whatever reason. But going back to your last victory then, that's also a bit of time ago. So a sweet one, like. Oh, no, definitely. Like, it's, I suppose, realistically, it's our, our first proper tarmac win. We would have won a uh, single stage back in 0-4 on tarmac, or we would have won uh and many stages in northeast i think in 2007 in the five and five car um but hadn't really done tarmac then up until 2019 and we said we wanted to give Wexford a go i went to on galway summer and then kind of led for most of saturday bar we had a spin on the last stage in Wexford, and that was kind of i suppose what caught me on the hop so much on saturday that we went down there with the intention of giving this a good go and Excellent. James just came out of the traps and we were like, oh, right, okay, we're in trouble here, like, you know, but again, we knew the rain was coming. So it was a case of rather than having to stay going, stay going, stay going and, and risking going through the hedge, 
we were kind of banking on okay if we can keep it under the we had originally said 20 to 30 seconds and okay it was 53 which would made it a little bit harder on Sunday but no um, no it was, it was definitely good mm-hmm. Andy from your point of view you must be sick of the champagne this year uh, <laughs> it's been it's been a good one Absolutely, yeah. No, I'll never get sick of it, to be honest. <laughs> no, it's been great year, yeah. Yeah, obviously, you know, a couple of nice wins and the likes of Tony Gall and West Cork. Gall, we really nice rallies to win or Cork 20 as well. And obviously, in the championship or so. Um, I was getting on to Josh here on this year. He often says to me, you know, you never run anything around me. So I said, I'll, I'll try and get something <laughs> without just over not the line. So uh, fair play to Andrew for stepping up to the mark there. Uh, obviously, uh, Josh is away this week. He's, he's over on, on holidays. And he finally took a weekend off rallying. Um, and uh, what's called it? Uh, myself and Andrew said so we, we go and do a couple of rallies together, do Galway and do extra. And I'm delighted with how it went actually. Um, what uh, Andrew was what's called a fantastic driver. Um, he played, he doesn't get out more. Um, because if he got out more, um, uh, what's he'd be a real force to reckon with at any, any stage, anywhere you know. Um, but I think it was fantastic for he done he did what two days in car, car 20 in the car and then did one day in Galway summer and they're bang straight on the pace and extra like you know so um and for once he had a, a bit of a measured drive it's not really in him it naturally <laughs> oh, gee, God. we were on stage 15 the stage there Tom was talking about where you couldn't see at the window it was the exact same for us 30 seconds went in the road and he's shouting and roaring at me saying I'm not going hard enough I'm not going hard enough and I'm there thinking Jesus you're going hard anyway definitely in the hedge anyway so <laughs> um, he's what you call it he's a he's a fair animal to, to tame but uh no a fantastic natural driver like you know so I I was like the weekend all together. Yeah. Can I ask you about your preparation? Because obviously it's very different. This is your home event. You're heavily involved in organizing it. There was WhatsApps going into uh, a little group we have for the ceremony to start up to maybe half five or six o'clock, I think, on the Friday. Uh, and obviously we're in good communication lines uh, in the days coming up to that, as you were with a heap of other people and you're out doing a recce. How do you maintain focus in all of this? Thing? Because he, he, he doesn't. <laughs> 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 I, I, I was asked a couple of times, right? Yeah, are you are you running the company, Wofford, or are you over in America, or are you doing the recce, or are you doing the rally, or what are you doing? <laughs> so <laughs> there was there's been multitasking going on, right? Yeah, no, I was, I was lucky actually when things fell. I had to, I had to be in New York for the week and uh, work, so we were over there, uh, kind of five hours out of time trying to get some stuff done over there, trying to get work done at home. And then, as you said, then in the evening, trying to organize the ceremony, start a few bits and pieces and a bit of PR and Facebook and that kind of stuff. And then got back on Friday morning, at five o'clock, into Dublin Airport and straight down the road and did a recce with Andrew. Um, and then the, re- the weekend took on from there, kind of. So, yeah, it was a busy lead up to the race, but uh, I-, I loved it. You know, it was a great weekend. Uh, as for me, obviously, it was brilliant you know, to, to rally at home. And to, it, it's great, obviously, to win rallies up and down the country, but it's, it's better again to win them at home, you know, in front of, in front of your own crowd uh, and your own local roads. And then, of course, having Danny and Mick go down as well was brilliant. Really made the weekend. Um, so I just called myself and Andrew met with the lads for, for dinner every evening. And it was just a, it was just a real good atmosphere for the weekend. And there was a big crowd around town, especially after the ceremony start on Friday night. And uh, it just really felt like a, like, a, a, um, like a big weekend in town, if you know what I mean. Um, you go down to West Cork or you go up to Donegal. And when you arrive into town, there's an atmosphere that the rally is on and there's a crowd around and everyone's there to see it. And it felt exactly like that in the mixture of the weekend. So we were absolutely delighted. And I uh, just echo what Tom Scanlon said there. Um, thanks very much to, to, to all the marshals and, and the guys who stood out all this Sunday. Because uh, I think that uh, um, Andrew said at the prize given there, you wouldn't put a dog out in, in that weather on Sunday. Like, so uh, it was amazing to see everyone that stood out. And even at the stage it was cancelled stage 17 the amount of people that were at the marches are uh, giving us a thumbs up and had a smile on their face they couldn't believe it you know for, for what they were doing mm-hmm. absolutely lads just a couple of things before we wrap up um i know andy you've uh, i suppose uh, connections of all wrc wise and everything but i had some general notes made for this evening just aside from wexford that i wanted to give a, a shout out to uh, in recent times obviously paul nagel it was his 100 event uh, at the weekend in WRC and on the topic of the WRC, Will Creighton on the podium um, at the weekend. Uh, Brian High has become the JWRC co drivers champion. John Armstrong narrowly missing out, of course, on taking uh, the driver's title there. Like our boys are going farewell, and look at what look at what Craig and Paul did, considering the circumstances as well. You take a bit of bad luck out of it, and it was bad luck, plain and simple. We're talking about a different story, but uh, you know, top six, top five finish in the end there's a lot going on there like and a lot of good stuff going on across the across the board with Irish rallying absolutely yeah it's brilliant to see isn't it you know um 
it's great to see uh, so many people doing so well uh, all over all over the world. Um, uh, Brian, in particular, their world champion uh, this weekend. Um, there's a, there's not very many world champions coming out of Ireland, so I think it's fantastic to see. Um, it's one of our own get, get, a, get a world championship title, and I hope it's celebrated properly. I'm sure Brian will celebrate it uh, in, in style up there. Good stuff. Uh, before I let you guys go, there's a message in here from a John Stafford. I, I think I know this John Stafford. Any chance of Andrew giving us a blast of Garrett Brooks done a lovely version on Sunday night? Is this a scurrilous accusation, Firsty? Because it's not. That. Don't if remember not, any of that. Can't we, we, we won't say no to our rendition before, before we say goodbye here, but I doubt that's going to happen. On that topic, else. actually, Kevin, we were down in uh, Kevin or down in James Stafford's pub last night and uh, we were leaving anyway. Uh, the, the party was going on all night, but we, we had to get back. I was in, in work at, uh, early this morning. But the last thing we did before we left was we went over to the jukebox, stuck a fiver in it. We searched for rain and we played every song in a, in a queue <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the word rain in the title. So we walked out the door and left and we could hear purple rain starting up. <laughs> so <laughs> I presume James got a joke anyway at some point. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Lads, thanks a million. And, and listen, uh, Andrew, thanks for coming on with the, with the I suppose, associate sponsorship here this evening. And Andy, from my point of view, I want to thank you as well because the information that we were able to get for the ceremony to start, you've been a huge help to me. And obviously in uh, organising a few bits of Bob's tonight as well. So thanks very much to both of you lads. And thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, lads. Andrew Purcell and Andy Hayes. And well done again on the overall win. So backstage, uh, I'm going to bring in Adrian Codd, chairperson of Wexford Motor Club and deputy COC at the weekend. Adrian, how's things? How are you, Kevin? Thanks for having me. Uh, not too bad. Now, I know the work hasn't quite stopped yet because... Uh, even this evening there, you had uh, the giveaway, I think, for the Marshes, which is, again, a very, very good concept. That was a little bit earlier. And uh, I asked you earlier, were you winding up or winding down or what way were you? But it'll probably take a week or two, will it? Uh, it'll take a week or two, Kevin. And, and uh, like I just said before I start, the two boys are very fresh looking there, now you consider the weekend they've had. And I think Andy, in fairness to him, um, if he had a if he had a kind of a, a, a bit of a big head on him for, for winning the rally two years in a row, he was brought back down there just in the morning when he got a phone call to come in and take barriers down off the, the key. So um I'm sure he wasn't expecting that no early yesterday morning, but in fairness to him he came out. So uh I'd have to thank him for that. He he saw it through out to the end. That's one way to humble you. Um yeah, look in, in general. I have to say, Adrian, right, from the moment I stepped into Wexford Friday and even being on, on the stages across the weekend, the, the feel-good factor, the, the amount of people and the feedback afterwards. Um, I was even chatting to Nestor, who a lot of people say is grumpy when I have him on this podcast and, and gives out a little bit. He's after getting the world of feedback. He wasn't even there with the amount of people that have been in touch with him to say how well it was run, how well the marshals were treated. Uh, there was one text in particular. I, I can't think of his name off the top of my head now. But royalty was was what was used to describe the treatment of of the Marshals, and they turned out in huge numbers. So I have to say, well done. Yeah. Um. You must be delighted with are, that. Kevin. And I suppose. I mean, to be fair, and everyone involved, you have to give them great credit. Absolutely, and and I think you know that's what we set out to do this year. Was you know, like I suppose the thing is, look at Marshals and volunteers are the most important people in any event, and um, without them, we don't have events. So the important thing for us was to uh, ensure that the marshals were looked after, I suppose, first and foremost. And uh, as Thomas alluded to, the lads alluded to earlier on, um, Bobby Hennessy, in fairness, put a huge effort uh, into organising the marshals' draw and getting the prizes together. And James Dorn, our chief marshal, worked tirelessly. And I think the amount of information that he got out to marshals in the week leading up to the rally or the weeks leading up to it was absolutely fantastic. He, you know, he kept in touch with him told them what was happening, got their accommodation organised, and um, it was just, look, at you know, I think every club now has to realise that these are the backbone of any event, and, um, you know, for many years, I suppose, you know, in the good times, we're lucky enough to be able to have these people, but now, it's kind of, they were taken for granted for a long time, and, um, you know, we have to realise they are the most important people in any event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you say, without it, or without them, it just simply doesn't happen. Um, class, class winners, we'll jump straight into it, Adrian. Or class we'll winners, three, yeah. I think, are we? Yeah, yeah. We have a go one, two, three. So we, we look at we start off with with class one, and uh, we had one fin finisher in class one, and that was Danny Mullins, which, in fairness to him, it was fantastic for his first event out in the car, and and I believe he didn't have a great start in testing, 
and uh, I think the boys were a bit concerned that he might even get to the start line with it. But um, I suppose just to put it in context, like he he was the only finisher in class uh, in class one, but he finished forty seventh overall, which yeah. is a fantastic achievement for for his first time out. So I was chatting to him on Sunday night. And I was asking him would he consider going out again. So I think he might have plans. Now I think that the bug might have bitten, and uh, yeah, I think he might be considering a, a change of career, maybe, <laughs> possibly. But uh, no, Danny, Danny won Class One. So Class Two uh, in third place in Class Two, we had Shane Quinn and Sean Bruton. Um, second was John O'Rourke and Ken Blanche, and first was Keen Cadwell and Donald Lennon in the fourth Fiesta. Uh, we move on to class three, and it was an all expert affair in class three. Ray Carwin and David Bush were second, and Aaron Bates and James Sinnott, uh, first in class three. Um, class four was Pat Price and Andy Curran, second, and first in class four was Tomas O'Rourke and William Tracy. And in fairness to Tomas, I think he was putting in some fantastic times there on Sunday as well in, in, in the group N car. So he was putting up to the to the other guys in the, in the more powerful four wheel drives. Um, class five uh, in third place we had Oliver Stanley and Ambrose Dunn, um, Shane Murray and Gary Hayde were second, and Connor Moore and Leo Techler, the All Wexford crew again, uh, won the class. Great result for Connor as well. His first time out in a in an R five car, and the top ten finish. And a top ten finish, yeah. And he, I was chatting to him as well on Sunday even there, and he, he was uh, saying he had to go and hire a car, I think, to get the top ten finish in Mike's. So he was delighted with that. Um, <laughs> class nine again was was a uh, heavily uh, backed Mike's for competitors here. Was, uh, Kevin Price and Adam Darcy third in their Nova. Kenny O'Brien and James Kelly second, and uh, Brian Car- Brian and Elaine Carbon were first in the rear wheel drive two hundred five. Uh, on the class ten. We had uh, Bryn Furlong and Jack Harris in third, Frank Hinsley and Pat Knox uh, in second, and Brian Cullen and, or sorry, Paul Cullen and Brian Rowan uh, first overall. So and Paul wouldn't have been out for a few years actually. Uh, so that was that was good going as well. Yeah, yeah. it was it was good going in fairness now, and, and uh, he was putting in some fantastic times there all weekend as well now in in, in his class ten car. So forty second overall, great result for for Paul to be fair. Mm-hmm. Um, Class 11F, uh, we had Etienne O'Sullivan and Dunica Burke. Third, uh, again, Wexford crew members Shane Delaney, or Shane Delaney, sorry, and Mark Havner second. And Gavin Russell and Daniel Callahan were first playing Class 11F. So, someone in that class I want to give a shout out to uh, Adrian. Uh, I think he was fifth, Emmett Cleary. Emmett, um, yes. Danny, Mark, I tell you one thing, I, I had some crack with him Friday, boy. Uh, we had a little bit of a, a brief before he came over the ramp. And he was telling me he was going out with a set of um, set of slicks for the weekend. And I'd mentioned that then when he came over the round. And he said, no, I have another set. I got off top of a stylish pit. <laughs> so, I just, just was a really good character. Kevin, that wouldn't surprise me. And I tell you the truth, now, Emmett is around a long time. And, and, and if you're looking for someone to have a good crack with, and that will tell stories now that stand up on their own, it's Emmett you want to be having a conversation with. Now, to be honest. So, That's the job. Uh, we do recruitment driving. Get him on here, yeah? Absolutely great. I tell you know he'll, he'll he'll provide great entertainment now if you, if you could get him on there for an hour. That's what we uh, want. He wouldn't disappoint. But uh, actually, it was a great, again a great result for Emmett even in fifth and Anthony McGinley it was Anthony's first or sorry second event only I think as a navigator. So uh, the lads had a good weekend too. Not to be fair to him. Mm-hmm. Um, class eleven R. Then uh, we have again the All Wexford crew with Joey Lacey and, and Mikey Lacey in third. Uh, Corey Eves and Pascal McCartney in second in the Corolla and Ben McIntyre and Connor Lappin in their starters for first class 11. Um, on the class 12 and a couple of good battles in this class now to be fair. Uh, third overall, Philip Hamilton and Joe Comerford in the Mark II. Niall Fitzpatrick and Matthew Reid in second and Justin Smith and um, James McInerney in first. I think that was probably the tightest class battle of the lot now over the weekend in class 12. So um, again, on to class 13, we had uh, Lionel Jones and Michael White in third. Uh, Wexford members, Leon Galvin and Jared Foley uh, in second and 14th overall, a great run for the lads as well. And John Moran and Rutan O'Connor were the winners of class 13. Yeah, and a good overall result there as well. 
a good over yeah 11 overall for the last just out there mm. just outside the top 10 i don't i think there were I, I i can't remember exactly but there wasn't much in it though to be fair so mm -hmm. uh, i'm looking not to not to creep inside the top 10 there um class 14 uh obviously the the big guys um third overall was uh some guy called miko herbin and with a uh, yarno watman um you heard think, him somewhere <laughs> yeah you know, yeah. I, I think in fairness though he was uh, I think Miko was a bit blown away by the pace of of, of the the lads over the weekend in in the class. He just said that he's he couldn't believe the pace that the that the most of the the modified guys were on. Um, Richard Moffat and Dara Kelly were uh, second overall and or sorry second in class, fifth overall. And Kevin Eaves and Chris Milley were uh, first in class and fourth overall. So good result for the lads there again. Look at it. Obviously, you know, that's that's the class that's that's the biggest battles and the entertainers over the weekend. So um actually eleven finishers in that class, Kevin. So it was that that was probably the biggest class mm -hmm. of the rally, it's a, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh class fifteen, uh, Mikey Moynihan and Al Moynihan, uh first overall and or sorry, first in class sixty seven overall. Uh class twenty, we had Colin Murphy and Don Montgomery who were second in the class. I think the guys had a few issues on the Saturday and um, lost a bit of time. And the winners of the class again, Wexford members, or Wexford clubman, Ollie McPhillips and uh, Billy Collins in the uh, Ford Fiesta. So the two finishers in the, finishers in the story class, uh, Noel Dine and James Murta were second and Wayne Evans and uh, Sion Jones were first and we had one finisher in the junior category was Dara Kelly and Owen Kelly in their Honda Civic. So that's, that was our class results over the weekend. Um, I think we had somewhere in around uh, 70 odd or 75 odd finishers. Now I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think we had a, a lot of, um, a lot of guys went out early on Saturday, considering it was Sunday would have been the day you would have expected, I suppose, to have a, a few offs but it was Sunday was relatively quiet as wasn't compared to Saturday um, where we would have lost the majority of the, the guys I think to mechanical trouble and, and maybe the odd off mm -hmm. You didn't get um, lambasted with the loss of stages either uh, luckily enough in general like No we were very lucky uh, look we ran 17 of 18 stages and like to be fair I suppose the stage we lost wasn't through any fault of our own and um, there was a call made on it uh, that it was you know, it, it was a little bit dangerous. So I know on the last stage before for service for sorry on, on stage fifteen before service on um on Sunday, there was some concerns about about the safety of the stage and the lads that spoke about it earlier on that that the rain that came down and to be fair it, it wasn't like that when we had went through as officials. Um so obviously we were we were taking a close look at the at the final loop of stages as we went out and uh stage seventeen was deemed to be uh, unsafe by by the uh, MI official, so the decision was made to cancel, which was a bit of a disappointment. But look at um, you know when you get kind of seventeen out of eighteen stages over a weekend, it's not a bad return considering you know um, a lot of clubs you know this year for various reasons probably lost maybe two or three stages in in one day events. You know, so we, we were very lucky and, and we were very happy. Look at the important thing, Kevin is. is everyone gets home safe and mm. uh you know if there's a safety issue then you have to kind of take it on board and um so you know that's that's that was the concern for stage 17 and uh we were lucky enough we ran 18 and you know the rain had kind of kind of eased off a little bit but the standing water wasn't as probably as big as an issue on on 18 as it was in 17. Mm -hmm. lastly um i know we've thanked marsh is organizing everyone involved but i think from from your point of view, you've lots of you've lots of great organisers, and the vibe and everything that I got from the weekend, in terms of even the ceremony of start, was that you're putting foundations in place not just for fifty years of the Wexford post like a stages rally, but maybe for years to come as well. You've now put a foundation in place with that ceremony of start that gathers so much people that you could probably look at maybe going doing that next year. Now I know it's not as simple as just saying lads we're having the ceremony of start. There's lots of uh, organisation among different people involved, different stakeholders. But it appears you've laid some serious foundations now that you can go on and, and even go on to greater things like uh, we have and, and look at to be fair kevin as i think i said to you on friday night the foundations for this hub have been laid for the last 50 years to be fair and and we're only building on 
you know, what, what has been there all along. And I suppose this year, with the break, you know, through COVID and everything else, we decided, you know, that we'd go out and try to do something special for the 50th year. And, you know, no one knew with the ceremony at start. We hadn't done it before. We didn't know what to expect. And I was blown away with the crowd on, on Friday night, I have to say. Um, you know, and just being around there, I probably didn't take in, take it in until, you know, you looked up around the corner and seen people all up along the street. And I was told there was loads of people down on the quay in Wexford. And, and um, it was probably the feedback from the drivers that, that made us realise just how many people were, were out looking at it. So, look, it's certainly something, you know, we, we, we've we built foundations, but it's, you know, you don't rest on your laurels. We, we, we'll, we'll kind of hopefully look at it as, a, you know, it'll be obviously a successful event. And uh, we'll build on it hopefully for next year. And, and as I say, you know, look at it, just to, to, to reiterate what the rest of the guys have said on here the marshals, in fairness, some over the whole weekend, you know, it was fantastic. We, we, we you know, I don't think if, if you spoke to any of the guys that were out there on the stages, you know, they, even the officials going through, don't think we had any issues with spectators. Um, you know, everyone was doing their job. We trained, we, we were lucky enough to have over 100 marshals at a training night two weeks ago. And that kind of showed on the weekend as well. So these guys are, as I said, the backbone of the sport. And, you know, we had them for the ceremony at start on Friday night. We had them all day Saturday and Sunday, you know, in that weather for to have them out there and the guys in service and anyone, you know, our stage commanders, our timekeepers, our radio operators, the whole lot. It doesn't just stop the marshals. It's just the volunteers in general. It was fantastic to have them all. And um, just on that, if I could just give a shout out, in fairness, Derek O'Neill, as you know, we just had our draw there live at eight o'clock on Facebook, and um, Derek won our top prize, which I was delighted to see. Derek is a a long time supporter, a long time marshal of, of of a lot of events in the country, so it was great to see Derek getting rewarded for um for being out and about over the weekend, and not just this weekend. I think he's out hill climbing or whether it's a rally, and you'll find Derek out and about somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. Adrian, we'll leave it at that. Thanks a million for for coming on. Much appreciated, and uh, thanks for all your help with, with Friday as well, from, from my point of view. You made it fairly seamless, along with Mr Hayes and everyone else involved in the club. So um, thanks a million. Much appreciated, all right? Well, look, at thanks to yourself as well, Kevin, in fairness. It was a great night, Friday night, and it was great to have you down. And uh, look, from, on behalf of everyone at Western Motor Club, I'd just like to say thanks, and, and uh, hopefully we can do it all again next year. Good stuff. Thanks, Adrian. Mind yourself. Right. That's the story now, Adrian Codd, chairman of Wexford Motor Club. Uh, just a couple of comments before we finish up mark cooper uh it was saying mark cooper i think it's C C O C from the other day uh well done lads great result that's to andrew and andy east coast rallying well done to the wexler motor club on a fantastic and very well run event it was a very enjoyable week's rallying or weekends rallying i should say it should be around of the irish tarma championship without a doubt who knows who knows lads uh i certainly wouldn't be against that either uh shout out to eamon kelly as well and kyle mcbride respectively winning the jbrc and uh, the academy section of the JBRC. Uh, other shout outs include the Marshalls training meetings, which are currently uh, ongoing. I think there's one in Port Leash last night, and there's a number of those coming up. Uh, they are uh, on our page somewhere, going back to go back for the posts on Facebook and they're up on uh, Motorsport Ireland as well. And uh, yeah, uh, I think there was to be a meeting last night uh, as well with the Irish Tarmac Rally. Organised Association, and I think on the agenda, which they shared on their social media pages, um, a lot of the points that we'd actually spoke about on the podcast earlier this year were on the agenda, which is which is great to see. And we are delighted to provide that platform. And we always feel we're, we're fair, honest, and balanced. And uh, everyone deserves a fair crack at the end of the day. And uh, that's how it should be, in my opinion. That's the way it always will be. And if there's anything on the program, I suppose, that people feel we're not being fair and balanced about or whether you want to have your say or not, there's not wrong with getting in touch with us retrospectively. You can email us, irishrallypodcast at gmail.com or drop us a DM on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. I don't take uh, any offence to any feedback that anyone has. I love it. I know you're tuning in if you're doing that and uh, everyone deserves their respect. So, look, that's what we leave for this evening's program. We've had big numbers. I want to thank all our guests and uh, thank you, the listeners. And the viewers, we get the audio up on Spotify and Apple in the usual places very, very shortly. And a big shout out to Bluestone Motor Finance, who came on board for the podcast this evening, and indeed to PM Autos as well. That's where we leave it, folks. Uh, we're back again next week. We'll be doing a review of uh, the Bushwhacker, which is on this weekend. So the very best out there, everyone competing in that. Well done to everyone again at Wexford Water Club. We'll chat to you next week. <laughs>